Blitz. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the City of Oxnard Planning Commission regular meeting for Thursday, August 5th, 2021. We are convening at exactly 6 p.m. A quick housekeeping item in accordance with Governor Newsom's executive order N-29-20. Members of the commission and some staff will be participating via teleconference. As shown on the agenda and online, please email all written public comments to planning at oxnard.org. For those wishing to speak, may visit oxnard.org slash city dash meetings to fill out the speaker form or call 805-385-7878 by 2 p.m. the day of the meeting. For my colleagues, please use the raise hand feature when you wish to speak. Once you have been called on, please then click the hand again to lower. When making a motion or seconding, please clearly state your last name for the record. For presenters, when needing to advance to the next slide, please say next slide. Because the meeting is electronic, all votes will be done by roll call. And following tonight's meeting will be a quick subcommittee meeting of the rules and procedures. And with that, Madam Clerk, if we can have, um, Madam Secretary, if we can have the roll call, please. Yes, uh, Vice, Vice Chair Arroyo? Here. Commissioner Connolly? Here. Commissioner Lopez? Here. Commissioner Meyer? Here. Commissioner Nash? Present. Commissioner Sanchez? Here. Chair Chavez? Here. We have quorum. Thank you for that. We'll now move into the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, sorry, before we do that, uh, Mr. Kowitz, for some quick announcements. Uh, Chair Chavez, thank you. Uh, so I wanted to share a couple of things with, with all of you. Uh, we're broadcasting live from a different room tonight. Our city council chambers have, uh, the remodel has started. So with that comes a couple of different technical changes. So please be patient with us as we're going through this. Um, if there's weird, funny sound things that are occurring, please let us know. But so far the test has, has told us that um, things should be smooth. Uh, with new technology um, and with the change, we are broadcasting live only on YouTube uh, this evening. So I wanted to let everyone know that as well. Um, and I uh, wanted to let all of you know that you've had a chance to, uh, to meet Jessica uh, Matarosa the last couple of meetings. Uh, she is flying solo for the first time tonight. So uh, please support her in her role. Uh, you've been awfully kind to her the last couple of meetings and I have no reason to think that's gonna change tonight. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you all. And uh, with that, I hand it back to the chair. Thank you for that, Mr. Kowitz, and good luck um, to our <laughs> Madam Secretary. Um, we'll now move into our Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Commissioner Meyer, uh, sorry, Commissioner Nash, do you mind leading us this evening? Certainly, everybody uh, rise. Put your hand over your heart and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, be seated. Thank you for that, uh, Commissioner Nash. We'll now move into public comments. Uh, members of the public wishing to address the Planning Commission regarding any item not on the agenda, but within the subject matter jurisdiction of the commission may do so at this time. The commission cannot take action on any items presented during public comments and will be referred to the commission secretary. All public comment speakers will be limited to three minutes. Madam Secretary, do we have any public comments for items not on the agenda? No, we do not. Thank you for that. We'll go ahead and move into our next item, which is our consent agenda. Approval of minutes from our July 15th, 2021 meeting. Commissioners. The Vice Chair Reckle. Thank you, Chair. Um, on the vote on the amendment to the main motion vote on page five of the draft of the minutes distributed to us regarding amending the required separation distance from 600 to 500 feet. Um, actually, I voted against and Commissioner Sanchez voted for the vote. So I believe that the minutes should reflect and switch us so that Commissioner Sanchez and I um, have the opposite vote. Thank you. Is 
So just to confirm, that would read uh, for the amendment to the main vote, uh, Commissioners uh, Meyer and Sanchez voted in favor and Chair Chavez, Vice Chair Awejo, Commissioners Conley and Nash uh, voted against. Correct, Mr. Fowitz. Just double checking, thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, any additional um, revisions that need to be made? If not, I'll be looking for a motion. Commissioner Nash. You're muted, sir. Uh, Chairman Chavez, I move that we approve the minutes with the uh, uh, requested edit. Okay, thank you for that. Vice Chair Rejo seconds. And a second by Vice Chair Rejo. It's been moved and second for approval of our minutes with the edit um, to reflect for Vice Chair Rejo's comments. Madam Secretary, if we can have a roll call, please. Commissioner Nash? Aye. Com uh, Vice Chair Rejo? Aye. Commissioner Connolly? Aye. Commissioner Lopez? Stain? Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Uh, Chair Chavez? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you for that. We'll now move into ex parte declarations for public hearing items. Vice Chair Rejo. Uh, yes, Chair. Um, I will be recusing myself on agenda item F1 regarding the commercial cannabis business retail special use permit due to 18 USC 203 and 18 USC 205. Um, if there's no objection or if there's other direction from the chair upon recommendation of staff, I'm going to log out of the meeting keep track of it on YouTube and try to get back in time for section G. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Commissioner Connolly? No. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Dr. Lopez? No. Thank you. Commissioner Meyer? No. Thank you. Commissioner Nash? None. Uh, Chair Chavez, I, I would suggest that um, Vice Chair Arejo does not log out because of potential technical difficulties. If he just mutes and stops the video, that should be sufficient uh, if that is okay with staff. We will check with staff after um, we hear from the other commissioners about ex parte. Thank you for that, Commissioner Harris. Uh, Commissioner Sanchez? No. Thank you. And for myself in this particular item, no, but I do want to briefly state um, that Outside of the commission, I do do a podcast and have, have members um, from the cannabis industry join me in conversation. Um, none of those conversations ever put me in a position to take a side for or against. And I want to make it perfectly clear that I am coming to this unbiased and have reviewed all the documents from staff and the applicants and will make my decision accordingly. So with that, Staff, if you have a recommendation to uh, Commissioner Nash's comments um, in regards to our vice chair. Yes, I'm happy to address that. As long as Vice Chair Arwejo uh, turns off his audio and turns off his camera, then he there would be no argument that he is participating in that item. And then that would address the technical issue of uh, his ability to rejoin the meeting at a later time. Thank you for that, so, Vice Chair. Uh, I acknowledge um, I will do that and turn off my video and audio when you get into section G and turn it on or yeah, section F and turn it on shortly before section G. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Commissioner Meyer. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I was um, seeing if I might be able to get some clarity on what the the reason for the recusal is, I, I know that uh, Vice Chair Arrejo um, referenced a couple of um, of codes, but I'm not clear on what the reasoning is. Um, if that's within my rights to even know, if it's not, then uh, no further questions. Yes, through the chair, I'm happy to address that. Uh, Vice Chair Arrejo is a federal employee 
uh, he has obtained a legal opinion that he is not allowed to participate in cannabis related matters. He cited provisions of federal law uh, as support for that. So I, I concur with his decision to recuse himself uh, from this particular item. Thank you, counsel. Okay, so um, our vice chair will go ahead and turn off his video and um, keep his microphone muted for the duration of item F1, which is our public hearing item. Project name is Harbor Management Group, LLC, Commercial Cannabis Business Retail Special Use Permit, Planning and Zoning Permit number 21-516-22, a request to permit the operation of a commercial cannabis retail facility within the proposed 4,131 square foot commercial retail suite of an 18,296 square foot industrial building on a 2.79 acre site located at 2150 Trabajo Drive within Business Research Park Zone. Our applicant on this is John Muller on behalf of Harbor Management LLC. Um, and our city staff person is Jose Colt, associate planner. The recommendation is that we find the project to be category, categorically exempt from environmental review pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act, um, sections 15301. And Adopt a resolution 2021 approving planning and zoning permit number 21 516 22, uh, special use permit subject to certain findings and conditions. As a reminder to the public and my fellow commissioners, that this is a pre recorded meeting in accordance with Measure M and is available on the city's website and YouTube channel. I will now turn to our city staff for a brief. Um, summary on the project before we move into commissioner comments or questions sorry staff uh, thank you chair uh, chavez uh, so this is in a very brief succinct uh, form this is our first commercial cannabis uh, special use permit that the planning commission is reviewing uh, there are uh, a number of other applications that we are processing uh, behind this one um, very succinctly, I think I might actually leave it mostly at that, but I do want to let you know that uh, we are uh, joined by a number of staff members tonight to answer any questions that the Planning Commission um, and or members of the public may have. Uh, so specifically uh, in, the, uh, in the, the new chambers, if you will, for tonight, um, uh, myself, uh, our Associate Planner, Jose Coyle, are here, Ken Rosell joins us. And virtually, we're joined by Kathleen Mallory, um, who helped lead the efforts to create the cannabis regulations, as well as members of our police department. Uh, I could see uh, Assistant Chief Eric Stansigard on the camera with us as well. So collectively, we are here to assist with any questions that the Planning Commission uh, and or members of the public may have. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask Kathleen if she has any additional words that she wanted to share with this one in particular, and then uh, we'll turn it back to the Planning Commission as a whole. Thank you, um, Scott. Thank you, team. And uh, this is an exciting uh, first step for the city. So just happy to be here and to answer any questions. Um, the team's available. Thank you, Ms. Mallory. And thank you, Mr. Colwitz. So we'll go ahead and turn, or I kind of want to, the applicant team actually has a presentation. So I want to get the feeling from the commissioners if we want to hear the applicant's presentation first, that way we, we don't double up on questions or if we want to take questions towards staff first and then the applicant afterwards. What are the feelings from the commission? Commissioner Nash, you're muted, sir. <laughs> one day, <laughs> one day. <laughs> Not today. Uh, thank you, Chairman Ch uh, Chavez. I would like to hear the applicant applic uh, presentation uh, prior. Now, in other words, Commissioner Meyer. Uh, I concur. Okay, thank you. So we'll go ahead and um, have the applicant team do give provide their presentation and then our commissioners will go ahead and ask questions of both staff and the applicant team um, at the conclusion of that. Okay. 
they're launching. That's right. Okay, and we are pulling up their presentation at this point in time. Good evening, Commissioner Chavez, um, um, Chair Chavez and fellow commissioners. Um, so tonight, uh, the presentation is going to be led by uh, Lonnie Jarvis, uh, owner of Harbor uh, Management Group LLC, DBA Safeport. Um, and so we'll go ahead and load the presentation here. Um, and Lonnie, please unmute yourself so that you can commence your presentation. And we are. Are we, uh, we ready to go here, Jose? Yes, it's already preloaded. So just let us know when you need to go to the next slide. Very good, if we could have slide one now. Um, next slide. Um, first of all, uh, good evening, uh, Commission Chairman, Vice Chair, Commissioners and staff. Uh, thank you for the opportunity this evening to present our company for us. It's, it's been a long road for all of us, uh, in, including the city, I'm sure. Um, I'll be very brief here, uh, offer some points that I think will be relevant to the conversation and uh, we'll, we'll move on for questions. Um, let's see, uh, there we are, thank you, Jose. Okay, uh, to start off with, uh, I'd, I'd like everyone to know that uh, Safeport Harbor Management Group is a family owned multi-generational, we are multi-generational um, residents here in Oxnard. Um, father moved us to uh, Channel Islands Harbor, Silver Strand Beach back in 1970. Um, we've been in the, uh, the, 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 the business of starting businesses ever since then. Um, the ownership for Safeport will be on site. Our, uh, our, our new building out there um, will contain our corporate offices. Uh, everything that goes into operating this company uh, uh, at, at, at whatever various locations we should have will all channel through Safeport in Oxnard. Um, we have a very unique local familiarity with the local demographic. Uh, I think that stems from primarily being very successful with Safeport in Port Wainimi. Our knowledge of the, 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 the city, uh, the people, and then the way that we were able to really guide Safeport as a customer service based company has really led to people um, sharing with us their ideas of what cannabis dispensaries they would like to, how they would like to see them grow and, uh, and function in our community. And we've, uh, we've listened uh, quite, uh, quite well to those, uh, those people and that advice. And I, I think we've come up with a formula that, uh, that is, is, is unique for the Ventura County Oxnard area. Uh, slide two. Um, we have successfully run Safeport since 2018, October 2018, so two and a half years. Um, we take extreme pride on being highly adaptable to the city's needs. Um, I think if uh, you have had any conversations with the Port Wainimi market and uh, spoken to, uh, to Chief Salinas and some of the other, the others that we integrate there uh, with, you'll, uh, you'll understand that uh, Safeport stands ready at all times to, uh, to, to work with the city and to be a part of the city's needs. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's, very, um, it's very important that uh, we know that every city kind of designs their industry a little bit differently and that we come into the cities and we look to the city to really guide us into what they feel they would like us to provide at what level, at what timing. Um, that's, that's critical, that integration between the city and the, uh, the, the dispensaries. Um, we have exceptional employee benefits. Uh, we do pay a, pay a greater than living wage. I believe that resembles somewhere where uh, we, uh, we bring new employees in. They start at $19.25 an hour now. Um, that's at reception. And it goes up from there. Um, all safe port employees um, have an opportunity to grow within the company. Every job that is created within safe port has a, a, a two week duration of time of posting within our company so that we can promote current employees into those positions. Uh, we do not as, uh, as, as other companies would across the state uh, look, for, uh, look for members of other communities to come and be imported. That's kind of a nod to the 75% uh, the employment uh, uh, from, from Oxnard that, uh, that we would like to, uh, to, to achieve and believe that that would be quite easy. Um, most of the employees within our current Port Wainimi store are Oxnard residents. Um, Safeport has established a, a, a very good brand identity um, relating mostly to our, 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 our tremendous marketing team. Um, we are a, we're a company that values our customers, the customer service. We have a, a, a lot of policies that are not present within other dispensaries. One of those being the time that an individual can spend with a sales associate. Um, most dispensaries have a very short period of time, 
by program that they have to have customers in and out in order to do the volume that they would like to do. Safeport does spend considerable time training a number of our employees to be much more medicinally trained and looking at the needs of customers that need more information than just a flavor of the day and in and out. Um, that's a, 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 a unique part of Safeport that you find very few dispensaries in California will, uh, will, will um, entertain. Next slide. Um, Safeport is dedicated to the community through the existing relationships with the nonprofits. Uh, those are on the screen. Uh, Boys and Girls Club of Oxnard has been a, a, an anchor uh, nonprofit that we have contributed to. Star Optimist Club, the REACH program uh, out of Port Wyneme, uh, Oxnard Homeless Shelter, Habitat for Humanity, um, the Oxnard Fourth of July Fireworks, uh, uh, Ventura County uh, uh, Caregivers Organization, are to name a few. Um, although we do uh, we do work with a, a lot of smaller, what we like to call grassroots nonprofits, um, just smaller companies uh, that are doing good in our community. Uh, uh, an organization that we're discussing uh, 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 contributing to now is the Santa Clara River Conservancy. Um, looking at some of the uh, access problems, uh, water runoff problems that, uh, that that are created due to the uh, the issues around the uh, the Santa Clara River. Now, we like that because it is a uh, it's 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 a it's a great cause that touches a number of communities. Both Oxnard and Ventura will benefit from that uh, contribution. Um, there's a number of others within Oxnard that we have uh, not yet had an opportunity to contribute it to. Uh, but through the Chamber of Commerce and the relationship that we have there, we do now have a list of additional um, nonprofits that Oxnard uh, is, is very, uh, is very um, uh, interested in seeing us contribute to. We do understand that Oxnard will be driving a lot of the, uh, the, the contribution. Uh, our 1% will be coming directly to Oxnard for their uh, dispersal, I believe. But we, um, we, um, we feel that we will do above and beyond for some of these unique uh, um, other nonprofits that we will largely be paying for out of our pocket without the benefit of that 1% credit or credit towards that 1%. Um, next slide. Oh, I think, Thank you. I think, you have I, I think, I think we missed one there. Because no. they had the old presentation. Oh, actually, yep. thank you for your time this evening. That, that will suffice. Thank you for that. Um, did you want to add additional information? No, I had one slide, but I, I believe we actually uh, thought it was going a little long. So that was that was deleted to keep it under two minutes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, no worries. Um, so we'll go ahead and turn to our commissioners uh, if they have any questions for either staff or the applicant team at this time. Commissioner Connolly. I have a quick question for the applicant. Um, when you donate and participate um, for events with minors, like the Boys and Girls Clubs, as you mentioned, do you donate as a cannabis retailer or um, do you use a company name that's a little bit more ambiguous? That's a very good question. Uh, oops. That's a very good question. Uh, we, <laughs> initially, when we uh, first started making contributions to the Boys and Girls Club, um, we made that contribution at their request in the name of the Jarvis family. Um, that went for probably the first three contributions that we've made. But uh, the Boys and Girls Club has uh, slowly but surely come around and they're, uh, they're, they're very comfortable now. Uh, our relationship is uh, Harbor Management Group Safeport, uh, making everybody very aware that this is coming from cannabis. And um, I think it's, uh, it's, it's critical that they do know that. Uh, it, it helps with the public persona um, just because it is a product that is not available for people under 21 doesn't mean that the revenues raised from those sales cannot be distributed amongst uh, a, a group that so justly uh, deserves and needs those contributions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Commissioner Connolly. Commissioner Nash. Hey, I'm not muted. I'm not muted. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> now, this is for the staff. Um, You've had no uh, comments or reaction from the adjacent uh, from the adjacent businesses, specifically the church. Uh, Commissioner Nash, yeah, Commissioner Nash, and members of the uh, the commission. I actually think that maybe is a question that's maybe best answered by the applicant team to talk about their relationship with other property owners, but. 
Uh, specifically, we have not received any negative comments from any of the property owners. Um, staff has attended one meeting on site um, where the members of the church and members of the Safeport team and the property owner all joined us to talk about the vision of the property, if you will. So from staff's perspective, it seems like there is um, a, a level of uh, working together um, on this application, but I'm gonna turn it back over to the applicant team to provide any additional uh, nuance that they may want to provide. Thank you, Mr. Kulwitz. Yeah, uh, so uh, that, that is to me now, correct? Yes. Yes. Um, thank you for that question. Um, yes, having having a church directly next door uh, was something that we felt needed to have uh, attention. Uh, we needed to communicate with the church. We've spent, uh, as as we all know, this project has uh, has, has 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 taken some time. Um, over the course of the last just shy of two years, we've had upwards of I think we've now had six direct meetings with church staff um, and also individual pastors. Uh, we've uh, we've met with. I think at this point, um, the the best way to describe the relationship is uh, is, is 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 good. Um, we've uh, we've made some inroads to uh, to um, assuring the church um, of the concerns that they had would be items that we would consider with them and come to a solution. Um, at this point, the church is going to be um, encompassed within our security umbrella. Um, that would include, um, we will be uh, installing, it uh, looks like four cameras on their property that will be viewed by our security team. Uh, we do have a, uh, if, you, uh, if you've seen the floor plan, which uh, it's been available prior, uh, we have a security room uh, with, with monitors for the cameras in there and a full-time staffer to monitor those. We also will be investing in a, uh, an, an electric uh, golf cart uh, that will have the security emblems uh, uh, largely represented on the side and a flashing the yellow light on top. Our third of the three security guards will be making regular sweeps in that car, uh, that golf cart to the church, as well as all the other neighbors. Uh, 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 the, the Powers family has power equipment there. Um, there's the hose man. Um, and uh, basically we have a very small kind of a community of businesses with no residents. So it allows us to really do an effective job uh, uh, maintaining a vigil on the, uh, um, the shenanigans that could potentially uh, go on at the, uh, uh, these facilities um, in the church's mind. Um, we found that there's really no opportunity with the amount of guards and security and cameras. Um, our Port Wyneme operation has had no issues whatsoever. Uh, we do not expect any there, but we did want the church to feel comfortable that they, were, uh, they had our security protocols in place for them as well as uh, ourselves. Um, we have a number of other uh, uh, little uh, uh, um, um, uh, asks that have come to the church, and uh, we will work uh, diligently as we progress through. Uh, as they have uh, concerns, we will, uh, we will address those concerns in a friendly and neighborly fashion. Uh, uh, and, th and thank you for being sensitive to the concern of your uh, business neighbors. Thank you. Like good neighbors. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Nash. Commissioner Dr. Lopez. Good evening and uh, thank you uh, for the presentation, both city staff and uh, our applicant. Uh, in terms of the uh, staff presentation, I uh, very much appreciated the background slides numbers nine and 10 uh, with the cannabis regulations uh, and the timeline just for uh, members of the public uh, to be able to follow on uh, the road that we've traveled to get here. Uh, in terms of the applicant, uh, congratulations being the first. Uh, very much appreciate uh, all the hard work, uh, the due diligence, and just uh, the steps that you've taken to uh, reach out to the neighbors, uh, like you just mentioned. I had a couple of questions. Some of them were already answered, so I'm glad that we were able to uh, incorporate the uh, applicant presentation before our questions. Um, the presentation uh, by staff mentioned uh, the established industrial center, uh, you know, with the appropriate parking, the landscaping, as well as the two-story uh, adjacent building. Uh, and I know that the, uh, the report that staff uh, shared with us or prepared for us uh, this evening uh, 
made reference to a number of conditions, uh, you know, including the lighting, uh, signage, and I think the signage were, were conditions more in terms of uh, appropriate uh, codes around signage that it didn't reflect uh, to, uh, you know, uh, ongoing traffic and whatnot. Uh, but the commission in recent uh, meetings has really put a premium and I think elevated uh, both public and pedestrian safety uh, at many of our, uh, a number of our previous meetings. And so my question is in terms of signage uh, and maybe uh, planning staff or, or public safety uh, staff that's joining us, uh, is there uh, any conditions or concerns in terms of like the traffic signage uh, and in general public, public and pedestrian uh, safety signage? Uh, and the reason I ask that is, uh, you know, particularly I think for the overlap with a church operation and, and, and service hours, just to make sure that we continue to, to elevate just that pedestrian safety. Was that for staff or that was for me? That was for staff. I think Ms. Mallory or Mr. Kowitz can address those questions. Uh, Chair Chavez, we're going to let, uh, or Jose Coyle on our team is going to take the lead on this one, and then uh, maybe we'll jump in after that. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, so I, I need further clarification. Is this for um, traffic uh, walking or driving by as far as directional signage um, to appropriately um, dictate sort of a traffic um, law um, as far as speed um, and that sort of thing? Or is it more meant uh, for the signage that's going to be on site? Both actually. So it's certainly for pedestrian, you know, right of way uh, and, and just traffic safety, but then also on the premises, uh, you know, to distinguish uh, the the allocations or the direction for for each tenant's parking. Okay. Uh, yeah. In regards to the first part of the question, um, there the traffic um, department was um, available um, and reviewed this project, um, and this was an established project. And so, um, through the review process, they didn't determine that additional signage was needed uh, for vehicle um, sort of traffic um, calming devices or anything like that. Um, as far as the shared parking agreement, um, there won't be any sort of signage that dictates exactly who gets what parking spaces depending on the uses there. Um, so anybody from the general public that's either there for the church, um, working at one of the manufacturing facilities or warehouses, or just there for the retail component of this request, um, can easily park wherever they, um, they find a parking space or, or they liked. Um, as far as uh, the signage on the site, um, there is an established master sign program that basically allows um, uses uh, to have an allowed of space of, of signage on the site. Um, and this applicant request uh, is not to change that. Um, and so it would be conforming to what would be there at any other business that would move in there. Fantastic, and thank you. And, and just from the, the applicant's comments uh, to one of the questions earlier, it just seems like if there was an issue to arise, uh, you know, they'd be more than willing to to work uh, and and uh, you know uh, provide those uh, if there was a need. Um, let's see. There was a question in terms of, I believe it was slide eight, where it said that no public uh, meeting was necessary uh, for the item. So I was just wondering, also, and maybe already included in the response to to Commissioner Nash, but uh, at any point, even with the uh, the uh, community development director approval that was given for the development design review. Were there any uh, comments or concerns that, that the city uh, received uh, with that uh, review earlier? Hello. Uh, so no, uh, for the development design review for cannabis um, manufacturing and distribution, there were no comments from the general public that were um, submitted to the city. Great. Um, and this, you know, again, it's just because this is the first uh, cannabis applicant that we have come before us. Uh, and just for clarification, for any member of the public who's following or, or future applicants who are uh, tuned in, uh, one of the, let's see, conditions, I believe condition 37 talked about a, a business permit uh, shall expire and subject to renewal 12 months after being issued. Is that just for after year one or is that gonna be ongoing for the life of the business? That's an ongoing requirement. Okay, perfect. 
And then uh, also condition 40, just general question, uh, who would revoke any violation of law, rule, regulation, or standard? Would that be uh, code compliance or would it be just any uh, you know, local, state, uh, county, administrative uh, office of jurisdiction? So I'm happy to address uh, that issue to the extent that there were violations of the city's regulations uh, and there was a need to do a revocation, that would be before the city manager. That would be handled there with the public hearing with appeals rights as well. Great. Well, thank you so much, uh, staff and the applicant. Uh, I very much appreciate uh, all the work that went to getting us here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dr. Lopez. Commissioner Meyer. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Um, yes, a, a couple of questions um, that perhaps the applicant might be the most appropriate to answer, but uh, not necessarily if someone else might, on the staff might be able to better support. Um, so one question of clarification is, I know we're talking about the dispensary here, um, but for my understanding is the dispensary um, part of a, uh, additional business of the uh, applicant that is involved with other aspects of cannabis uh, cultivation, uh, distribution, and so forth? Yes, that is right. Um, currently Oxnard has permitted to set this facility with a distribution license and a manufacturing license type six non-volatile. Um, the way these businesses are structured under the state law um, they function all as separate entities. Uh, so as much as we would love to run a cannabis company, they really are three separate functioning businesses under one roof. Um, and uh, that's, uh, that comes with its constraints for operating, but it's, uh, it's likely to be the, the, the better for the community as, as we go forward. The community will only see and be privy to a, a standardized retail sales floor. Um, and that's, uh, I, I think, a, a, a preferable at this point in the industry. Um, uh, that that be the, uh, the the vision that they see. Um, it's uh, it's 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 early on in the cannabis uh, um, um, industry in Oxnard, and uh, I think the dispensaries serve as that community outlet, that community uh, base for what we do. Um, and uh, that's, uh, I, I think, largely a a, a a good plan at this point. Thank you, thank you. And so are those other businesses, the, the two other pieces, are those already in operation as we speak? Uh, no, uh, they are permitted. Uh, 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 John Muller, the architect is currently uh, undergoing uh, uh, construction documents plans for that. And we hope to be pulling a, uh, a permit for those, uh, I would think in the next 30 days or, or less. Uh, John could probably speak to that. I see. So within the constraints of uh, cannabis law in the state, you're you're developing a model that's somewhat more like vertically integrated if if I'm seeing it. It'd like to be, I think what they term in California, a California micro business license, which is three or more disciplines landed on one property uh, functioning as three separate businesses. Um, it offers us a, a great opportunity with those, those other licenses or permits in the city of Oxnard. Um, we actually will be, in the beginning, uh, because there is no cultivation within Oxnard, we will be buying bulk cannabis product uh, into manufacturing and be able to create very specific brands and products out of that bulk cannabis. that will be very much targeted to our community. Uh, we're not buying, well, we will be, but we will not be buying exclusively products from San Diego, San Francisco. Uh, these will be products that will be augmented by products that we will create um, very, uh, very unique to the, uh, the Ventura County area and marketed there to the Ventura County area. Great, thank you. And then I, my last question was around the parking. So it seems like you, you must have developed some level of cooperation among all the businesses that use the parking because the, the parking plan seemed to rely on at different times, you would have access to X number of spaces and it sounded like the church was a big piece of that as well in, in cooperating with that. 
Without a doubt, the church has been great to work with. Um, we, uh, we, we went ahead and we adopted the existing parking plan that they had with the previous business uh, that was uh, 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 residing in our, uh, the building we're in. Um, we've also, uh, things that we've done, we, we likely would have liked to have seen our industrial spaces have the ability to work in a seven day schedule. Industrial, sometimes you, you need to, to run longer hours, but part of that, that parking agreement was that none of our industrial spaces would work on the weekend. So they are, they are Monday through Friday only. There will be no distribution, no manufacturing functioning on Saturdays or Sundays, which gives them the church the ability to have more of that parking um, uh, that is on, which would be, I guess, technically considered our site, um, while they most desire and, and need are impacted. Um, and uh, we've also entered into discussions uh, about uh, any, any time that they would have events at the church during the week that we would make arrangements to have likely one of our security guards in the parking lot to kind of route traffic and make sure that our customers are parked towards leverage to one side of the parking lot, leaving the church uh, the ability to have a uh, more convenient parking closer to their, their building as well. Great, great, thank you. It sounds like you're, you're thinking forward and thinking ahead of how to make this work well for everyone. So that's, that's very, uh, um, that's very appealing. So thank you. That's all my questions. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer. Commissioner Sanchez. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Um, <clears throat> just a couple quick questions. Um, the, the, park, the parking situation, um, uh, so that's pretty much resolved at this point. Um, there's enough for, for the business and what have you. Yes, um, I think that is largely resolved. However, um, we have not, uh, this is not under a finite uh, arrangement. Um, as things alter change, as they often do, um, we've left this to be sort of a living agreement that the, uh, the church and the uh, and, and, and Harbor Management Group Safeport will be regularly checking in and making adjustments to, um, to, to suit each of the, uh, the needs of both, uh, both organizations. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so the the hours are 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., correct? Correct. Okay. So um, right now there isn't much there. Is, are, is there any, is it occupied at all in the building? No, our, our building is not occupied at this time. Okay. Um, other than our building, you have uh, the Hoseman, Gold Coast Church, power equipment, and then there are a couple very small, I believe there's a strawberry broker that's also in the building between the church or maybe up, upstairs of the, of the church. Um, and uh, that's, uh, I believe, all of our neighbors. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what I was thinking was, um, you know, uh, 9, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., uh, you know, if it's like in Port Wainimi, there's a lot of lighting because, you know, uh, Port Wainimi is built up. But in that, in that, you know, right off the freeway, uh, I didn't see too many lights. Well, they weren't on yet, but, but you know, the, the light poles and what have you. Um, if you need additional, uh, I don't know, if you might need additional lighting for your customers that are coming there. Um, have, have you, has there been any uh, conversation about that at all? Yes, there has. We have actually uh, engaged a, 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 light, a lighting study, I guess is what it would uh, have been termed. Mm -hmm. and, um, found to be, uh, I, I believe, sufficient currently. But uh, if, uh, if uh, John Muller would like to chime in on that, John could probably give you a little bit more information about our ability to increase lighting. Um, there's a lot of regulations that the city has. Uh, no lighting can be, uh, it has to be shaded. So there, uh, no light dispersal upward into, uh, in, uh, to, to allow for light pollution. Um, our signages cannot be lit. Our signs will be unlit signs. Um, so uh, any lighting that we will provide will likely be at the parking lot level um, uh, with additional sign uh, uh, parking pole standards for, uh, for more nighttime parking uh, um, ability. Um, we do have a very, um, um, we have security at the front door outside and we will, we will ensure that that front entrance is, is well lit up for that security and his field of view out into that parking lot our security is tasked with not only keeping us safe in the dispensary, but making sure that not only our employees, but our customers can get from their vehicle uh, both ways safely. Um, 
security is there a half hour before we open and stays a half hour after our closure to make sure everybody uh, arrives and exits safely um, and uh, um, is maintaining that parking lot and that, uh, that, um, um, that environment that it is safe, secure, and well lit. Well, I, mean, I, I appreciate uh, what you just said because at, uh, you know, at some point the area might start to grow, but right now, you know, you're going to be the, um, you know, there's not too many businesses, but it looks like it'll probably be growing at some point. Thank you. You're right. Thank you. Chair Chavez, this is Scott Colwitz. If I could jump in here for a quick second, just a, yes. a quick uh, administrative note. Uh, our, our applicant talked about how the parking regulations or the parking um, experience is going to be a, a living experience. It's going to change maybe a little bit over time. Uh, while that might be true um, in terms of the day-to-day -day operations, the parking uh, um, allowance that the planning commission is, is making, the administrative parking um, uh, changes, the minimum number of parking spaces that are required for the different businesses, uh, that is set per our code and per the study. But what we find with the study is that there's essentially 43 extra parking spaces that are essentially overage. So essentially what the applicant is talking about with um, you know, the, the living document, it's really those 43 spaces and who gets to use those at any point in time. That's where the flow is. So uh, as a technical matter, we wanted to share that. Overall uh, planning staff, as well as our traffic staff, uh, believe that the plan that's been provided to all of us uh, will work very well in the field. Uh, we're able to answer any additional questions about that if the planning commission has questions about that. And I also wanted to make a, <coughs> excuse me, a quick comment um, in regards to Commissioner Sanchez's questions about lighting. Um, the lighting component um, is primarily led by the police department um, as part of their uh, security plan review. Um, the amount of, of conditions that we have uh, from the police department on this particular use are pretty, pretty high. Um, in the resolution, it's conditions 80 through 150 specifically come through the police department. And I'm, I'm raising that because it's really, really robust review by the police department. If we wanted to get into any specific questions about lighting, uh, there's a handful of those, uh, specifically conditions 108 through 114 have to do with lighting. And that's everything from the intensity of lighting, the color of lighting, the shielding of lighting, uh, the placement of lighting relative to landscaping. Uh, all in all, without going into the details, what I'm really aiming at is this project and other cannabis projects that you'll see um, have really gone through a robust review. Um, and we're, we're feeling pretty confident about how this whole program has been set up. And if there's any questions about any of those things, we're uh, available to answer those as well. Well, I think, uh, oh, if I, if I can just uh, uh, make a, uh, uh, make a statement as far, um, it looks like, um, cause it's really, you can't really see it. It's, you know, there's cute, uh, cute, um, eucalyptus trees somewhere there. So there, you know, there's a lot of things that could obscure it. So that, that, that was my concern as far as with the lighting and things like that. But, uh, but if, if the, uh, police department say it's, uh, okay, then, you know, I'm okay with that. Thank you, Commissioner Sanchez. Commissioner Nash. Thank you, um, Chair Chavez. And I would be remiss in not asking our uh, Chief Sonstegard if his department is fully satisfied with the process as it's played out. I know there's 188 conditions, many of them um, from the police department. So if there are any other, any further concerns, I would like to hear them. From our from our uh, police representative. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioner Nash and uh, uh, Chair Chavez. Do you mind if I respond to that? Yes, please go ahead, Chief. Okay, all right. Thank you, Commissioner Nash, for the question. Yeah. Um, so I, I personally have been involved uh, with the cannabis process from the genesis, probably working very closely with Kathleen for three or four years now. So I I am both personally confident in uh, the steps that not only Safeport, but the other applicants have taken up to this point. 
But even more so uh, as an organization, I'm very confident in the review process of each of the uh, security and safety plans. We have uh, a, a SEPTED or crime prevention through environmental design specialist, Scott Swenson. He unfortunately wasn't able to be with us here tonight, but he is an industry expert and he does uh, a, a tremendous review and not only a review kind of uh, post submission, but I think uh, Lonnie and some of the other applicants will attest to the fact that Scott is uh, makes himself available like as the development of the, the plans are in place. And so if one of the applicants uh, ha has an area that they have some questions about, um, Scott, as the police department representative, um, is there to work with them. We really, uh, it's our goal to make, you know, to make every applicant that comes in front of this uh, commission successful. And you do that by uh, exhaustive and a thorough review uh, before, before we get here. So that's a long-winded uh, way, Commissioner Nash, of saying that I'm very confident in uh, the plans that have been uh, submitted by Safeport. And, and, and I, you know, I, I, I thank you for your comments. Um, anybody who has taken the time to read the, the uh, full cannabis ordinance and the uh, and the conditions of approval would have they could have no other response other than wow, you know, staff has really knocked themselves out on this. So I, I congratulate you all. Thank you, Commissioner Nash. Anything further? Nope. Uh, Commissioner Meyer. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Uh, yeah, I guess in relation to the safety question, just uh, um, maybe some clarification on how the space uh, remains safe for customers. I mean, I know that um, cannabis dispensaries are in the matter of customers come in, they purchase, they leave. And it's not a, a matter of any space being created for loitering, um, no attractive nuisances, things like that. Um, what are the what are the steps taken to avoid um, others that may have less, you know, more nefarious purposes from um, being in the space or from creating a, a threatening environment in some way? That would be for me. It could be for you or for Assistant Chief. Um, I guess whoever feels. Well, Lonnie, you could. I mean, you know, you know, Lonnie's got more um, experience of this than I do. So he can start. And if I, if I would need to add anything, I will. Great. And, well, I, I will have to, uh, to, to, to concede that, uh, that, that Scott has been a phenomenal asset for us as, as well as uh, looking out for the city and the, the public interest. He's provided a, a, a lot of uh, advice and solutions to problems through our design, uh, worked very diligently with, uh, with, with both my team and John Muller's team at, the, at Architecture. Um, which has been uh, very, very much appreciated. Um, I think he's visited the site now at least three times, if not other times without me present. Um, to, see, to speak to your question though, um, one of the nice things, uh, we have three licenses potentially landing on this site uh, up, up to this point. Each of those licenses would trigger a security guard, which means we will have at least three security guards at all time present on the, on, on the, um, the, the site. Um, we all know that uh, uh, all security companies, all security guards are not created equal. Um, we feel that we have uh, one of the best industry standards for security uh, operating currently. Um, we've been working with them for three years at our current location in Port Wainini. Um, the three officers will be uh, di dispersed in a manner um, by which we will give our facility the, the, the most complete coverage. There will always be a, a, a security guard, armed security guard at the front door outside. They were tasked with monitoring the parking lot, the comings and the goings, cars. And as we all know, we're looking 100 feet out, 300 feet out uh, and greater if we can. The second security guard will be tasked with the security room where we will have a very sophisticated monitoring system. Um, all cameras repeating back into that room and will be viewed by, by that security uh, uh, guard in that room. Third security guard will be tasked with the mobile uh, uh, the, the cart as we spoke um, and he will be in a constant sweep of the, uh, of, the, of the property and adjacent properties. 
Um, I don't know what that interval will be, but then they will be switching off uh, the, the, the guard in the cart comes to the front door, the front door goes to the security room. And that happens uh, uh, at random intervals. So that cannot be um, um, watched and uh, anticipated by anyone that does mean uh, um, uh, is, is up to no good. Um, uh, the facilities cameras uh, are, are largely trained on, uh, on, on approach, uh, the ones at the front of the building from our parking lot. Um, and that, uh, that gives all the security guards, which will have access to those cameras on their various devices, whether it be an iPad in the, uh, the, the security guards cart or on their, their phones. So they all can kind of oversee each of these specific duties. Um, the depth of the security uh, access door controllers, uh, nobody that comes into our space will have the ability to migrate into one of the other licenses uh, at all. Uh, everything is locked tight as a drum. Uh, first thing you're, uh, you're, you will encounter when you enter the facility is a reception desk that is the central hub for all entities operating within the, the, the business. Anybody coming on an industrial, uh, 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 coming to one of our industrial spaces will be by an appointment. Uh, nobody will walk into Safeport um, just to get into an industrial space, whether, whether that be distribution or manufacturing, that is by appointment only. So we, uh, we keep traffic of our, our customers from the in industry separated uh, by that fashion. And uh, that gives our, uh, our security a, a, a lot more opportunity to view and see the, uh, the traffic largely coming to the retail component, which will be the largest amount of traffic. And I'm sure Scott has a lot more than I'm sure uh, Eric probably has a, a lot more he could uh, he could offer on that as well. I think Kathleen is going to add a little bit from the city's perspective. She's she, again, she knows more about it than I do. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Assistant Chief. Um, thank you, Council Members, the Chair. Uh, a couple things came to mind. Um, one is also an important component. Our ordinance does not allow on site consumption. There's no consumption in the parking lots. It's none in the building. So that is specifically and strategically not allowed. Um, one other issue in terms of the uses that this is not an integrated business plan, meaning your manufacturing is integrated with distribution, is integrated with retail dispensaries. These are unique and separate uses. They are not integrated. They are uh, separated through doors. You cannot exit from one to the next. These are considered discrete and not a micro business where you're uh, flowing between the different businesses and having access amongst dispensaries into manufacturing. That's a very important component. Um, and because the, the laws are different for that and the regulations are different for a micro business. Um, and thirdly, uh, the council in their, in their forward, forward thinking uh, we'll have a, a specific uh, person, a uh, staff person that is just um, earmarked to work on cannabis and cannabis program issues. Um, that person will be coming on around October. They're going to be responsible for uh, coordinating, uh, directly reaching out to the different businesses, only specifically on cannabis um, and working uh, quarterly um, with, the, with all types of cannabis operations uh, facilitating meetings, um, verifying for renewals and, and co uh, condition compliance. So uh, we have one person that will be sp specifically targeted with all the cannabis operations, which you know should, gives us a, a, a good leg up at ensuring uh, compliance. Commissioner Meyer, anything further? You're muted, sir. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Yeah, just one, one further just point of clarification. So as I understand it, state law does not allow consumption of cannabis uh, outside of private residences in any case. Is that correct? With perhaps some possible uh, exceptions for certain businesses that have begun ar arranging something else? I, I, I don't play an attorney, but um, I, I would have uh, Mr. Rizal speak to that. Commissioner Meyer, if I understand your question, you're asking, um, are, is it allowed for people to consume the cannabis they purchase on site, right outside? Is that your question? Or is that where people can consume cannabis generally? 
Uh, my understanding was that it, it was not legal to consume cannabis outside of a private residence uh, as it stood, although I had known that there were some businesses in other cities that were exploring having a space for that to happen. And I'm not sure how that worked, but um, at this at this point in time, uh, no businesses in Oxnard have the ability to uh, allow consumption of cannabis on site. Uh, if someone personally acquires uh, cannabis at a dispensary, such as a safe port, if it's approved tonight, uh, and they can take it home, they can consume it obviously inside their their dwelling unit. And currently, the city of Oxnard does not prohibit the smoking of cannabis outside. Some cities do that. Uh, it is that is not currently restricted. There are, of course, restrictions on smoking in public parks, be it tobacco or cannabis. Um, but uh, uh, generally, you know, people purchase would purchase cannabis and then consume it, um, you know, in their own dwelling. Thank you, Commissioner Nash. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Uh, and I just want to address um, something that Ms. Mallory said. I, I hope that um, city staff uh, is always reaching out to the school districts to um, gather their input about how these businesses might be impacting our students. Uh, so that's, that, that's really all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further questions from the commissioners? Okay, I got a few that weren't touched on, but um, so a few of them were already touched on in regards to the security armed versus unarmed. So thank you, um, Lonnie, for um, clarifying that there are three security officers at any given time. Um, a question in regards to that, are they only there during, uh, I know you said a half an hour before, half an hour after operation hours. Do you plan on um, having them there during the off hours for patrols, or is it strictly um, within that time frame, eight thirty to eight or to nine thirty? Um, thank you for the question. Um, we are uh, we will be signing up actually in the process of now for um, uh, um, offsite video monitoring, which will go twenty four hours, um, which we find that to be very effective. Um, the uh, these these new cameras uh, work tremendous uh, at, in, in night environments. Uh, they, uh, they they light everything up. Uh, actually quite quite a bit easier to view the camera than by the naked eye in some of these uh, these instances. Um, we have at Safe Port, Port Wainimi, um, it's kind of situational, uh, depending on the need. Um, during the, uh, the civil unrest uh, that we had here uh, several months back earlier or the, this year, uh, we did engage our security company and provided two security guards 24-7 uh, basically just to keep the, uh, the, the, the business safe uh, during, uh, during those periods of time. Um, and uh, that's, uh, that's, that's worked out very effectively for us. Um, so at this, plan, at this time, uh, we are only looking at the uh, half hour prior and half hour after um, until we, uh, we, we, we see that there's a need for, for, for more. Um, we do have a, uh, 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 we're currently discussing um, a unarmed security to, uh, to also maintain um, parking lot order, uh, helping people park, uh, helping route people uh, as uh, deliveries come in, uh, del uh, routing delivery vans to our, 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 our uh, receiving dock, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, other than the 24-hour uh, monitoring after hours, uh, there is no, uh, uh, um, no need or no, uh, no, we have not indicated that we would have anything greater than that. So just to confirm, all three security officers are armed? Yes, they are. Okay. Um, I'm also curious in regards to the number of bud tenders at any given time. I know it states in the um, uh, the conditions that um, one customer, or sorry, two customers per one bud tender. Um, how many do you plan on having? Um, how many bud tenders do you plan on having at any given time? The the bud tenders will be something that we will have to determine one on site. Uh, we, based on the flow of customers, which we established very early on, how many people, what hours will come in. Um, I can speak to the, uh, we had that com uh, conversation about bud tenders to, uh, to customer ratio. Uh, Scott Swanson from uh, a PD had, uh, had, had asked me that question. Um, we at Safeport are one bud tender to one customer on our floor. Um, 
we feel uh, that it, having that other customer on the floor, we've provided a very nice reception with a lot of uh, a, a lot of marketing there. Um, it's just easier, better, safer for uh, for our staff, for our customers, and we do better sales when uh, when we have a, a a less congested sales floor. So we will have that state uh, requirement, and we will have a a customer per bud tender as a customer exits. A customer will be let back into the sales floor and will be uh, picked up by that bud tender that just finished with the previous customer. On average, I can tell you, uh, we won't know what the flow is at the uh, the Oxnard facility till we uh, till we get there. Uh, but I would say that we will likely be tasking six bud tenders to that sales floor uh, and then adjusting from there. I hope adjusting up. Okay. Um how many, the number of employees, I know um, part of the conditions is that 75% have to be Oxnard residents. How many employees do you expect that you would need at the Oxnard location? I think we're looking at a total staff in Oxnard of right, right at about the mark of 40. Um, that would include a uh, back office. Uh, this is our corporate headquarters. So uh, we will have uh, more staff there than the typical uh, dispensary that is uh, coming from another anchor city and uh, running just a dispensary. So uh, that 40 does include uh, Office staff, uh, we will have a bookkeeper, we'll have an HR department. Uh, I will have my office there, so I would be counted in that, that 40. Uh, our chief operations officer will be staffed at this building as well. Um, on the sales floor or at the dispensary uh, proper, um, I would imagine we're looking at probably 20 to 24 um, to, to uh, augment the, the different shifts. Uh, obviously nine to nine, uh, there's two shifts per day. So uh, it seems a little uh, weighted for the size, uh, but uh, the, uh, the multi-shifts causes us to have to have a little bit larger staff. Now, you said that it was by appointments only for um, the clients to come in. Um, when they get to that first security officer, it's, uh, they're checking IDs, making sure that the appropriate person's coming in. Then they walk into the waiting room area, and then they have to wait until they're actually given access to the actual floor, correct? Um, yes, but let me let me rewind a little bit. Um, the appointment only is for commercial for the industrial space. So if somebody's coming to our distribution or coming to our manufacturing, that would be by appointment only. There is no uh, there's no real uh, it, it, it's there's no reason for anybody to attend those other than for a professional commercial necessity. And we just want to know when those people are going to be there and scheduling them around our our peak customer hours. Uh, so no appointment is required for the uh, for the, the the general public to visit, but yes, they will be uh, there will be a check. Actually, uh, in busy times, uh, security will check IDs just for the over 21 uh, that nature at the front door before entering, and then that individual will have to show ID at reception and be placed into our system, um, which is the entry uh, uh, system as well. Um, so actually, two ID checks before they can get to reception. Awesome, thank you for that. Um, I have no more further questions for you. Um, I think Ms. Uh, Mallory, this question may be going to you in regards to the 1% donation that's on top of the uh, license fee and city cannabis taxes. Um, is this that donation that's supposed to go to a nonprofit or to a specific organization related to the city or uh, that I misunderstood that. Right, so um, there you may be, um, uh, Lonnie may be speaking of uh, any additional donations he's making above and beyond the city's required 1%, but it's the 1% is a yearly donation to the city and council did um, take action to direct it to specific causes and to reevaluate in, in five years. Um, so I'd be happy to share those you know, where the, where the money is allocated if the group, if the commission's interested in that. I see that as a yes. Yeah. I see um, yes so, is going. <laughs> yeah, so um, in this upcoming, um, uh, well, in the next, the plan for the next um, five years is to donate, uh, to use that money for the restoration of recreation and senior service programs. Um, and then, then there's um, additional monies that would be used for the renovations of the, um, the service center, we've called it, the, the building at uh, 1500 Camino del Sol uh, that provides services for a range of, of um, age cohorts from uh, seniors to young children to recreation programs for teens. So 
Uh, and then we would go back and reevaluate that with council. Um, as I mentioned, I think, I think it's uh, five years, um, three to five years. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, to our associate planner, um, Mr. Ho, uh, Ho, uh, just a couple of questions. I, I understand that there's um, some of the conditions of approval we'll talk about signage, um, what is appropriate, what's not appropriate in, in particular in regards to cannabis. Are they allowed at any point, and I'm not saying that they are going to do this, but are they allowed to have um, banners displayed at the grand opening that they may have um, just to indicate that it's a grand opening? I understand that's a special use permit required for that. Um, and then in regards to the signage on their front doors, I understand that logos aren't allowed, but um, just to kind of indicate where the entrance is at, would that be an option? In regards, in regards to the first question, um, they would be allowed to have banners. They would have to come in here to the city um, and basically one, obtain their business license, a business tax certificate here with the city. They're allowed to have that within um, 30 days of opening, either before or after, and then 30 days subsequent of them having a banner um, and any other sort of items out there. They would have to be affixed to a building. Um, so things like feather signs and that sort of thing that are typically um, seen on the landscaping buffer or sidewalk area would not be allowed. In regards to actual signage on the property, um, they are all basically, uh, there is an established master sign program that allows signage in specific locations only. Any variation outside of that would require minor modification to um, the existing uh, master sign program that's out there um, in order for us to analyze exactly what's going on out there, if there's any more sign allocation area. If um, the applicant wished um, to go ahead and provide sort of a directional signage as far as this is the main entrance, um, that could be done on site without a permit, as long as it didn't have actual logos or any sort of a trademark um, or, or something like that, that, that was established to Safeport Harbor Management Group. Thank you for that. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna be for our planning or for PD in regards to this, but uh, based off of the, the area that it's in, it, you know, there's fields all around the property. How much is the responsibility of the applicant owners if somebody decides that they're going to just go ahead and park on the streets and start smoking? Um, is there any responsibility that falls on the owner? Um, again, I don't know if that's to our planning or um, PD. Uh, I would recommend that Lonnie uh, address that in terms of his security personnel. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes, that's uh, and that's been the one of the uh, going back to the church next door. That's been one of the um, the concerns that they've had that somebody would make a purchase in our dispensary and then pull into their parking lot for consumption. Um, first of all, we we found that in Port Wyneme that that just doesn't happen. Uh, people are sort of on their way once they leave, but it is a part of our security protocol um, in the monitoring of cameras. Um, Cars will be, vehicles will be monitored leaving the facility and any, uh, any individual that should stop, uh, take a parking lot after exiting will very rapidly be visited by a very polite and courteous top of the window um, from our, uh, our, our security guards. Um, and uh, if it becomes a, a, an issue, we do have the ability with our, uh, our, our platform uh, to ban that customer from returning to the facility if it becomes something uh, more um, more of an offense than, uh, than than just moving on. Oftentimes, people will pull up and they're just they've got their phone out. They're looking for their next destination, and they will likely be moved along. Uh, should we find someone that is consuming in their vehicle that is going to be then moving on? At that point, we would collect a license plate number and call the PD. Um, that is uh, that's that's intoxicated operation of a motor vehicle and. Uh, that's something that uh, that should be uh, that should be um, relayed to the police department, um, and we would then keep a record of that as well. And likely that would create a ban from the next time they would try to visit as well. And I appreciate that 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 response for the premises. My question was more 
to the offsite. Um, because the area is, you know, fields all around, somebody parking on the street versus actual premises of the property, how much of the responsibility was to fall on you as the owner? Um, I think once that individual is off our property, um, while we would make a, a certainly a concerted effort uh, to, we have good visibility and then very little happening around our, 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 our site. So we would have obviously an opportunity to see that, that somebody has again stopped and that same protocol that they were uh, on the church's property, on uh, power equipment's property. But once they've left the, uh, the immediate area, um, I believe, uh, unless uh, correct me if I'm wrong at that PD, our obligation there uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, ends. I appreciate that. And just one final question. The hours of operation, you're okay with the nine and nine? Yes. That's, okay. uh, that's what we have in Port Wayne as well, and that uh, that works out very well. I appreciate that. Um, I sure. will, yes, Sir Chavez. <laughs> Sorry, this is hard to do sometimes without being in the same room. Uh, we also <laughs> wanted to point out that in the conditions of approval, uh, number 101 in particular, it states that the applicant shall prohibit uh, loitering by persons outside the facility, both on the premises and within 50 feet of the premises. And that condition in particular by the police department and the security plan is really to, to as Lonnie has already shared with us, to keep people moving or moving on, so to speak. Uh, so by and large, um, you know, the focus will be on site, but there's abilities to get off site uh, slightly. And thank you for that, Mr. Kowitz. And I did see that, um, but I was thinking broader um, the distance from the actual um, property. So thank you for that. Um, are there any additional questions for either the applicant or staff from the commission? Seeing and hearing none. Madam Secretary, do we have any public comments on this item? Uh, we do, we have two, but however, only one person um, is uh, of attendee. Uh, we have Steve Kidney and Andrew, Andrew Salinas. Okay, so we'll go ahead and um, take uh, Mr. Stephen Kenny. Um, Chair Chavez, uh, this yes. is Ken Roselle. If if you could open the public hearing before we take testimony, that would would be appropriate at this time. Okay. Isn't that the public comments? Well, this is a public hearing, so in order to take the public comments, we need to to open the the public hearing. Then we can take the public comments and go on with deliberations. So, um, I believe okay. that there was not a formal opening of the public hearing. Uh, thank you for that, Mr. Rosell. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, officially open the public hearing um, for this item, and then we will go to um, our public comments. Steve, you can go ahead and talk. Good evening, Chair Chavez. Can you hear me all right? Yes, go ahead, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, Chair Chavez, commissioners, good evening. Um, my name is Steve Kenny. Uh, I'm speaking tonight as an economic consultant to the city of Port Wainimi, uh, which I've been doing for several years. I was involved with the origin of the regulations uh, governing cannabis operations in Port Wainimi that were developed in 2017. And since then, I've been involved with uh, evaluating all the license applications and with monitoring the activity thereafter. Um, my purpose in commenting tonight is simply to convey to you the Port Wainimi experience over the last two and a half years with Safeport in operation in our community. And I just have to say it's uh, been virtually all positive. Um, Safeport has been a good neighbor to all around them. Compliance issues have been virtually zilch. Um, compliance complaints, that is. Um, they've been a good, good employer. Um, they've exceeded their pro forma such that they've been contributing more revenue to the city or Port Wanimi than was ever anticipated to begin with uh, due to their successful operations. They've been generous in the community. Um, as, as Lonnie uh, showed in one of his slides, they listed several of their beneficiaries. Uh, 
And you notice that at least three of them, the homeless shelter, the Boys and Girls Club, and the uh, fireworks at the harbor a couple of years ago um, are, are all already benefiting Oxnard, uh, even though they were at that point a strictly Portlandian op operation. Um, so in, in sum, I just have to say that they've been an outstanding corporate citizen. You know, I was in the business for many years of trying to attract businesses into Oxnard, and we always uh, kind of emphasize the importance of, of uh, corporate communicate or corporate relationships in the community. It's, um, and we always felt that uh, like Haas Automation was the uh, the epitome of the outstanding corporate citizen because of the many, many ways they've benefited the community. Um, so I have to, I have to say that in, in scale, um, Safeport has been that same sort of outstanding corporate citizen in Port Miami in all those ways that I mentioned. Um, and I just have every reason to believe uh, that they would be operating in exactly the same way in Oxnard, and that would all be to your benefit. Thank you. You have, you have 30 seconds. Done. Thank you, Mr. Kenny, for your comments. Uh, we'll go to the next person, uh, Chief Salinas. Can everyone hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Andrew Salinas. I am the chief of police here in the city of Port Wainemi. Uh, I was asked by the owners of Safeport to uh, be present for this hearing as a subject matter expert on the regulation and enforcement of cannabis businesses operating in the, specifically in the state of California and even more specifically in the city of Port Wainemi. Uh, Port Wainemi has been involved with the uh, operation of uh, retail businesses uh, for over three years now. Uh, but there are still some misconceptions about how these business operates. Um, and so uh, if requested or concerns were brought about, I would be able to answer any questions as needed. But because this is a hearing, I realize I'm only giving public comments. I did just want to offer uh, to the Planning Commission that um, Safeport has been a responsible cannabis business uh, operating in the city of Port Wainimi and have been incredible donors and contributors to our community as well having pledged uh, well over a quarter million dollars in the last uh, two and a half years. Uh, so if the past behavior is indicative of future behavior, I have no doubt that Safeport and specifically represented by owners, Nancy and Lonnie Jarvis will be incredible business owners in the city of Oxnard as well. So that ends my public comments. Thank you, Chief, for your comments. Um, so Mr. Roselle, do I close the public hearing before we move into deliberations? Yes, that would be appropriate. Thank you for that. Uh, so if there's no further public comments, um, Madam Secretary, no further, correct? That is correct. Thank you. So we'll go ahead and close the public hearing portion of this item and we'll move into, um, I'll actually ask for staff um, to have any final comments, uh, if they have any. Um, We'll start with our planner, uh, Mr. Colt, and then move to Ms. Mallory, uh, Assistant Chief Sansegard, and then uh, final comments from our applicant team. On behalf of the Planning Commission, um, Chair Chavez, um, we do not have any further comments on this item. Thank you. Ms. Mallory? Nope. Uh, Assistant Chief Sansegard? No, there's no further comments from the police department. Thank you. From our applicant team, Lonnie, is there any final comments before the commission moves into deliberation? No more comments. Thank you. We'll now move into deliberation amongst the commissioners. We'll start with Commissioner Nash. Thank you, um, Chair Chavez. Um, and I'll reiterate what I said earlier that anybody reading the marijuana ordinance and the general and special conditions of approval can come to no conclusion, can come to no other conclusion that, that, that this is a probably the most highly regulated business we have in Oxnard. Um, and uh, my hat's off to the uh, applicant and his, and his team for, uh, you know, agreeing to all of the, uh, to all of the conditions and all of the regulations. I, I don't anticipate any problems. 
So I am prepared to uh, support um, staff recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Nash, for your comments. Commissioner Meyer. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Um, I appreciated the um, the applicant providing uh, detailed answers to uh, all of our questions, uh, and as well as a presentation. Um, I want to thank staff for the uh, thorough um, presentation and report, um, both the YouTube and the staff report. Uh, so those answered quite a few questions. Um, and I think I am, I'm heartened that the applicant is also uh, a successful part of Port Wainimi's Green Mile. Um, and while Oxnard is, you know, a, a few years behind Port Wainimi in this process, um, I know that it's been an extremely lucrative experience and, and a positive experience um, for Port Wainimi. And I look forward to uh, us experiencing the same thing here in the city of Oxnard. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer, for your comments. Commissioner Dr. Lopez. Thank you. Just wanted to echo and uh, add that uh, I too uh, am extremely uh, just impressed uh, and proud of the thorough, robust, and comprehensive report and presentation uh, that the st staff has uh, prepared for us tonight. Uh, including uh, public safety and conditions 80 through 170. Uh, I'm confident staff has left uh, no stone unturned. Uh, I very much appreciate the applicants' comments uh, earlier uh, in reaching out to their neighbors uh, and the meetings and conversations that have taken place throughout this process. Uh, I think as a city, we should uh, be proud, uh, extremely proud of the bar and the baseline that has been established uh, and uh, I end with highlighting the conditions of being a good neighbor and responsible corporate citizen. Um, you know, Oxnard's good name and reputation is at stake here and in your hands uh, with the Jarvis family as our first applicant. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I wish you good luck, best wishes, and please uh, take pride in uh, being an industry leader uh, and that corporate, uh, corporate citizen and, and good neighbor. Uh, and I too uh, am prepared to support staff recommendation. Thank you for your comments, Commissioner Dr. Lopez. Uh, Commissioner Sanchez. You're muted, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so I want to uh, thank, um, also thank staff for on the, on the comprehensive um, information you gave. But obviously this is a template for the ones to, to come now, uh, you know, because there's other, looks like they're gonna also come before the planning commission. So we appreciate that very much. And uh, Mr. Coyotil also for your efforts. Um, at this point, um, you know, we uh, hope that you have a lot of success uh, uh, here in Oxnard as we have had it over there in Port Wainimi. And uh, we, we, uh, we're gonna be, have very good, very good, hopefully good relationship with you as you have had with Port Wainimi and uh, look for you, looking up for you, a lot of success for you. Thank you, Commissioner Sanchez for your comments. Any additional comments? Um, I'll just state that um, I'm very impressed with staff from the first day that they um, took on this challenge of cannabis. Um, to today that we have a very strong um, ordinance. Um, it is no secret that, that when the ordinance first came to the planning commission, I was not in favor of it, um, not because I didn't believe in it, but because I felt it was um, kind of keeping an industry that was already approved by voters still in the dark. Um, as I see it unfolding before me with our first applicant, I see that I was wrong and I am big enough to admit that I was wrong. Um, this is definitely something that is putting us in a position where we will be able to protect an industry, protect our city, protect our residents and all of those that visit our city. Um, I appreciate the responses, again, um, echoing one of the commissioner's comments from our applicant, um, addressing all of our concerns and our questions. Um, it's very much appreciative that you were 
forthcoming with your answers and your responses and that a system is in place that will not only be your success, but be the city's success as well. Um, and to have the police chief and um, Mr. Kenny um, come and speak on behalf um, speaks volumes to, for me. Um, so like my fellow commissioners, I too can support this. Um, it is a benefit and I wish um, the Jarvis family and Safeport nothing but success moving forward. Um, are there any additional comments from the commission? If not, I'll be looking for a motion. Commissioner Nash. You're muted, sir. <laughs> How pathetic. <laughs> we'll get it one day, we'll get it. <laughs> Moving on, um, I uh, I move that we approve a staff's recommendation to um, find the project categorically exempt from environmental review pursuant to a CEQA and that we adopt resolution 2021-XX approving planning and zoning permit number 21-516-22 uh, subject to certain findings and conditions. And I don't think there's been any amendments to that. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dr. Lopez. I second. Thank you for that second. It's been moved and seconded to approve staff's recommendation of the Harbor Management Group LLC commercial cannabis business retail special use permit planning and zoning permit number 21-516-22 and to find the project um, category exempt from CEQA pursuant to section 15301 and to adopt the resolution 2021 approving planning and zoning permit number 21-516-22 subject to certain findings and conditions. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing and hearing none. Madam Secretary, if we can have the roll call, please. Commissioner Nash. Aye. Commissioner Lopez. Aye. Commissioner Connolly. Aye. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Chair Chavez? Aye. The motion passes. Thank you for that. And congratulations to the Jarvis family and to our staff and our city for much success moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. So we will now move into our next item. We'll and I see our vice chair is back. Welcome back, vice chair. Uh, we'll now move into our next item, which is our study sessions and reports. Uh, Title, rules and procedures, bylaw discussion. Um, the recommendation that the planning commission rules and procedures subcommittee present their findings and recommend recommended revisions to the rules and procedures to the planning commission and seek adoption of the final bylaws by the August 19th, 2021 meeting. So I'll turn this over to our vice chair, who is our chair of our subcommittee. Vice chair. Uh, thank you, Chair Chavez. So um, the, this amendment slash revision of the bylaws is being presented to the Planning Commission per our current bylaws, um, section 14, that they have to be submitted in writing at the previous meeting. Um, so presented to you um, or distributed to you was the final finalized version of the proposed revisions to the rules and procedures of the Planning Commission as drafted and thoroughly discussed among Chair Chavez, Commissioner Connolly, and myself with expertise both requested of and offered by staff. While there will be some minor edits to discuss and update up the revision at the subcommittee meeting following this meeting, all of which are also included in our packet, the main content and meaning should not change at the formal presentation of these bylaws at our next planning commission meeting. To give a broad overview at this time, all sections of the current bylaws have been updated in some fashion, except for three, those being record of meetings, parliamentary procedure, and resignation. Four sections were added, named title, preface, conduct of commission members, and adoption and amendment of rules and procedures. At this time, I invite my fellow subcommittee members if they had any additional comments along with staff after. I have none. Commissioner Connolly? I have no comments. 
Vice Chair. Yeah, so uh, thank you. Those are my comments right now for this item. Um, I can entertain any broad questions right now, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to have a more robust and detailed discussion at our August 19th Planning Commission meeting. So um, please read over these. Um, other than minor edits and typos, uh, it should be presented basically as it's distributed right now. Thank you very much, Terry. Is there any discussion from the commissioners in regards to these? Commissioner Nash. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Um, I, have, I have a question for uh, Mr. Uh, Kolowitz about a uh, suggested um, addition mm -hmm. to the bylaws. If I should bring that up now or wait until the um, August 19th meeting. Commissioner Nash and members of the commission as a whole. Uh, so what we can do tonight is we can talk about the bylaws. Uh, we could talk about um, any type of maybe potential small edits for the planning commission subcommittee to consider. Um, we could have those type of discussions um, as a, uh, a matter of course, if you will. What we can't do tonight is take a motion or a vote on approving the whole of the bylaws tonight. Um, so a, a dialogue is absolutely appropriate and Ken and I are, are here to help guide us through that collectively. Okay, thank you, Scott. So I guess I will um, bring that up. And I just, I, I, I so appreciate the um, hard work of the subcommittee. Um, it's obvious you really put a lot of time and effort into this. Um, I would make one addition and that is on the conduct to, of, of the meetings. And this is based on a comment I heard a member of the public make at a uh, County of Ventura Planning Commission meeting. And this actually happened. Um, I believe it was involving the uh, wildlife uh, corridor over the 101. And he actually said, and you know, granted he has his first amendment rights, but he's, he said that uh, he thought that the, the uh, all, all the, he thought that all the members of the planning commission should be taken out and shot. So I would, which is pretty shocking. So I would, uh, my suggestion uh, follows, any person person threat of violence against any commissioner, staff or audience member shall be referred to the Oxnard Police Department for investigation of making terrorist threats and possible enforcement of a gun violence restraining order um, referred to as a GVRO. So I just, I, I thought that might be appropriate because we live in, we live in weird times. And I think that the public needs to be put on notice that we will not tolerate any um, sort of threats against, against commissioners or staff or other uh, members of the public. Mr. Rosal, do you wanna um, respond to that comment from Commissioner Nash? This is based on the language that um, uh, was just mentioned by Commissioner Nash. Um, this is something which the Planning Commission could consider adding to its, its rules and procedures if desired. Uh, the standard for speech, as Commissioner Nash already pointed out, uh, is high, the bill, i.e. the ability of members of the public to exercise their First Amendment rights. So it is a fine line between rhetoric or over the top rhetoric and actual terrorist threats. Uh, but to the extent that the, the language is worded, you know, where it's, you know, thre actual threats of violence versus um, some of the more colorful language that has occurred um, at planning commission, city council meetings and in communications to both staff and elected and appointed officials, then I think that's something that could be uh, referred to the police department to determine if it meets the standards for the terrorist threat. So this is a this is a close call when it comes to whether or not um, uh, certain speech could could be turned over to the police department. But it is something which the the planning commission has the right to entertain to add to the rules of procedures. Thank you for that, Mr. Rosell. Um, I believe that would 
be an action that we will uh, bring up during the subcommittee portion uh, to determine. So we will take that under advisement, Commissioner Nash. Thank you for those comments. Thank you for that. Through, through the chair, um, if there is a desire by the commission to consider approval of the rules and procedures at their next meeting, it would be appropriate for the uh, commission to consider that the, the item raised by Mr. Nash now and a vote to be taken up or down whether you wanna consider adding it to it. If it's not considered until the, the subcommittee meeting, then that would trigger uh, a, uh, another meeting that the rules would be published. So in essence, if the, the commission, excuse me, the subcommittee desired to add that language, uh, then we'd have to re-notice it at the next meeting and then it would roll over to September. So if the commission considers it now, um, either up or down, then we believe that this, this minor change uh, would not trigger the existing requirements of uh, section 14, uh, which requires that um, there's the, the one, one meeting before uh, the, the planning commission, excuse me, the posting for one, for one meeting prior to the, the commission taking action on the actual modification to the rules of procedures. Thank you for that, Mr. Uh, Roselle. Um, Commissioner Nash. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Um, so I guess that would require a motion. So I would move that we include the uh, uh, text of my um, addition, I guess. And Mr. Uh, Kolwitz has the, uh, he has my email. So the exact language is, is present and I could also reiterate it for those who want it. So that, that's my motion. Thank you for that. Is there a second on Commissioner Nash's motion? Vice Chair Reco. Uh, parliamentary inquiry. Um, can I have the language restated by Mr. Rotel or by Commissioner Nash before we second or go into discussion about it, please? Commissioner Nash, you want to go ahead and state your sure. language? Any person making a verbal or written threat of violence against any commissioner, staff, or audience member shall be referred to the Oxnard Police Department for investigation of making terrorist threats and possible enforcement of a gun violence restraining order. Thank you Thank for you that chair. question. Anything further, Vice Chair? I second. Okay. Um, Commissioner Meyer. You're muted, sir. Thank you, Chair Travis. Uh, no, no additional comment. I was uh, raising the hand only a second. Thank you for that. So it's been moved and seconded to add the text um, presented by Commissioner Nash. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing and hearing, uh, com uh, Commissioner Dr. Lopez. And so this is simply uh, to have it added for now and at our next meeting on the 19th, we would be able to take the full document with that uh, amendment into consideration and debate it then also, right? That is my understanding, but I turn to uh, Mr. Roselle. Yes, th that is correct. That That is the idea that you are voting just on this particular item and not on the in entire rules of procedure. So if four or more of the commissioners vote yes, then that would be included in the document that you consider for adoption at your meeting on the 19th. Great, thank you so much. So if there's no further comments or discussion on that motion, Madam Secretary, we're gonna have a roll call on Commissioner Nash's motion. Commissioner Nash? Aye. Vice Chair Rojo? Aye. Commissioner Connolly? Yes. Commissioner Lopez? Aye. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Chair Chavez? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you for that. Th thank you, commissioners. Is there any further discussion on the bylaws that are being presented today? 
Chair Chavez, this is Scott Kolwitz. I, I do have a quick one for you. Uh, very yes. similarly to um, some final direction from the whole of the Planning Commission on once, uh, one item, uh, uh, Vice Chair Awe uh, put together a few memos to share the whole of the bylaws with all of us. And there was one formatting one that, uh, that he sent to the whole uh, Planning Commission. Uh, Ken and I both believe it would be appropriate at this point in time to um, go through the uh, the bylaws sectioning uh, uh, options here for us to get uh, direction on how how the numbering basically uh, would be presented. Um, so with that, I'll turn it back over to Vice Chair Wayho um, if he has any recommendations on any of these sequencing or or how he wishes to explain it to the the whole of the Planning Commission. And then we would ultimately look for a vote on this narrow topic of the sectioning again, not on the whole of the bylaws. Thank you, uh, Mr. Colwitz. Um, again, for just for reference for my commissioners that this is um, in regards to Vice Chair Rehol's memo, subject title is bylaws sectioning. Um, there are three options to it. Vice Chair, do you wanna give a brief summary about those? Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, the draft that the subcommittee has been working on um, was uh, graciously first drafted by uh, Chair Chavez, of which we have used as essentially a Christmas tree to make our amendments upon. Um, and so just based on after doing all the finalizations of the strikers and insertions, um, uh, I was going to suggest this simple um, sectioning of how we would cite um, any of the uh, bylaws. And so my personal preference is that option one is done with alternating numbers and letters. Um, obviously we can go with option two, which would give a structure of uh, something simplified in citing the only um, problem I have perceived with how the draft is currently laid out is that um, in the sectioning after the rules, um, they're not numbered or lettered. And so the example as I put in option three would make the, would make the citation just a little bit long. So uh, this is purely in regards to when and if we would cite a bylaw. So I don't perceive this to have any change of the meaning, just mainly administrative and paperwork wise. Um, thank you. Um, I'll wait for my other comments before I make a motion, if any. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, and again, referencing back to the Vice Chair's memo, uh, there are examples under each of those options um, that lays out um, how the structure will be um, laid out. Uh, Commissioner Nash. Thank you, Chairman Chavez. Um, I, I would um, choose option three, the no change option. Thank you. Thank you for that comments. Is there any other additional comments? See, uh, Commissioner Connolly. Just for clarification, are, are we're discussing now before the motion or are we discussing once the motion's made? It would, um, I think we're just trying to figure out which structure we want and then a motion will come from that structure that's chosen. Okay. Or, I think so in, our, in our subcommittee meetings, we definitely discussed um, structure and ease of reading of the document. For myself, I'm most familiar with um, Option one, it's standard in uh, bulleting in our, in, well, in my email and in Word. Um, and to say section 7B1I makes the most sense in my brain because that's what I, I deal with most of, often. Um, so I would recommend going with option one for clarity and more universalism. Thank you. Is there any additional comments? Commissioner Meyer. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would say being perhaps less ensconced in uh, perhaps what the city standard regulatory formatting is and more familiar with um, 
what Commissioner Connolly shared, the alternating of letters and numbers, um, that that I experience is more of a logical and um, accessible manner. So I would also be in favor of option one, but I am open to further discussion and um, and rationales. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer. Any additional comments? Um, I will just also uh, agree with Commissioner Connolly that I think option one is the logical choice, um, but that's my preference. Um, I think option two, all numbers would be a little too confusing, um, but we'll see about further discussions. Uh, Commissioner Nash. Thank you, Chair Chavez. I will withdraw my support for option number three and support option number one. Okay, is there any further comments? Vice Chair Rejo. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, at this time, I move to incorporate option one into the bylaws that are presented at our next planning commission meeting. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Dr. Lopez. Well, second. Thank you. It's been moved a second to incorporate option number one, the combination of numbers and letters for the structure of the bylaws. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing and hearing none. Madam Secretary, if we can have a roll call, please. Vice Chair Rojo? Aye. Commissioner Lopez? Aye. Commissioner Connolly? Yes. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Aye. Commissioner Sanchez? Yes. Chair Chavez? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, And Chair Chavez, if there are no other comments or requests for edits by members of the Planning Commission, we can go ahead and wrap up this particular item. And the intent would be to return on August 19th with the final version of the bylaws. Thank you for that, Mr. Kowitz. I was just <laughs> reviewing the other members, making sure we didn't miss anything. Um, the only thing that I will, uh, make a recommendation and I'll also make that recommendation in our subcommittee. Um, in the proposed draft under resolution, it says offered by Mr. Chavez, um, that can just be a strike through um, as originally the structure that was used for our live edits was offered by me, but this was not a sole document of my own. Um, it was of the subcommittee. Uh, Again, those, that would be my only recommendation as for a change. Um, but if there's no further questions or comments, seeing and hearing none, we'll go ahead and proceed to our next item. Or before we do that, Mr. Kowitz, did we have to take a motion on the strike through for that one item or is it okay just to administratively do that? No motion, excuse me, no motion is needed for that one. That's simply an administrative fix at the lowest possible level. Appreciate that. Um, all right, so we'll move on to our next item, which is our planning commission business. Commissioners, any comments? Commissioner Nash. Thank you, Chairman Chavez. Um, two items. First, I wanna thank uh, Mr. Uh, Colwitz for digging up uh, the email that had my uh, amendment to the bylaws. Um, I, I had not properly tagged it, so I could not find it. Uh, so thanks, Scott. And also last, uh, at the last meeting, I, I made the suggestion that uh, uh, the, uh, the hard copy of the agenda packet did not uh, find its way to my house. It turns out it was in my mailbox the whole time, so I want to I want to take a mea culpa and and apologize to to a staff for for any uh, uh, undue insinuations on on on, on their um, inability to get me the uh, the uh, staff report. So that's all. Thank you, Chair. It's okay, Commissioner Nash. We <laughs> <those moments. laughs> I have a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any additional comments from the commission? Commissioner, Dr. Lopez. Uh, two quick uh, comments. One uh, announcement that uh, 
there is a notice of availability of the environmental document uh, for the housing element. Uh, the public comment period will, will uh, begin August 5th at 5 p.m. and will run through uh, September 3rd. Uh, and so uh, it looks like the city has will be hosting also a virtual meeting August 18th from 3.30 to 5 p.m. to review changes made to the housing element since the release of the draft. So I wanna encourage fellow commissioners as well as the general public uh, to uh, log in uh, and uh, comment on that evolving uh, document uh, and draft of the housing element. And second, just uh, a heartfelt thanks to uh, the subcommittee. You all have uh, just done an extraordinary job after some of our long meetings to continue working uh, you know, with such a, um, a meticulous uh, document. And so just my uh, sincere appreciation for uh, your extra time uh, and service. Oh. Chair Chavez, uh, we, we believe oh. you're muted there. <laughs> wow, okay. Um, <laughs> again, <laughs> thank you for your comments, Commissioner Dr. Lopez. <laughs> Is there any additional comments from the commission? All right, I'll just give a few um, comments that I have. Um, I just first wanna say congratulations um, to Mayor Pro Tem Brian McDonald and his wife who, um, for 36 years um, is their anniversary that was celebrated this past Tuesday. And today, uh, a happy anniversary to Councilman um, Turan and his wife for 15 years. Um, it's definitely something to look forward to um, for all of those that are married. Um, Another announcement is that I was selected as the vice chair of the Ventura County um, Climate Emergency Council um, as a result of a vacancy from one of our um, former council members. Um, so I am excited to be able to support the chair, the council members and um, county staff as we work on behalf of uh, Ventura County. Um, and another commission that I sit on are the board of directors for Metrolink Saturday, August 14th, 2021 um, will be the new extended service um, on the Ventura County line. Now residents of Camarillo, Oxnard and Ventura can enjoy the, uh, can take a Metrolink day trip um, where they don't have to deal with traffic getting to LA. Um, it's a $10 day passes for a round trip and you can be able to use them on other Metrolink trains and children under the age of 17 um, get to ride free. So if uh, for all those families, um, August 14th, that's um, Saturday that will start that new extended service. Um, now to change the tone a little bit, uh, I want to share that I am very proud of this commission and each individual that is part of this commission. Um, each one of us brings something that's extremely valuable to this commission uh, that is working on behalf of its fellow residents. This is a volunteer position. We are not paid in any way, shape or form. Um, we do not get any additional perks other than the average resident does. Um, but two of our current sitting commissioners were verbally attacked um, by a member of the public that threw out racist and sexist comments. And the only thing that I will say is that there is no place in Oxnard for those. Again, I understand that the First Amendment allows those comments but it is absolutely disgusting that in 2021, we still continue to deal with those types of items. Again, I thank the commissioners for their hard work, reviewing staff reports, reviewing applicant reports, and for members of the public that throw out these comments that are absolutely disgusting, need serious help. I apologize for the somber tone, but it is definitely something that needs to be put out there, that it will not be tolerated 
in the city of Oxnard. We are on a new path and we need to grow and be able to respect everybody. There is enough violence against individuals across our nation. And the last thing we need is that here right in our own backyards. Again, thank you commissioners for all your hard work that you do on behalf of the residents of the city of Oxnard. And I want to also thank our city staff for all their hard work that they do on behalf of the residents of the city of Oxnard. If there's no further comments from our commissioners, we'll now move to our community development staff updates, Mr. Kowitz. And Chair Chavez and members of the commission, uh, thank you very much for the, the hard work comments. I'm gonna pick up from there and, and kind of outline what's coming forward for all of us. So picking up on uh, where Commissioner Lopez uh, spoke about the housing element, it's, it's a huge document that we're moving forward on. So uh, we wanna make sure that all the planning commissioners here have a chance to read the mitigated negative declaration that's been prepared for it. Um, I suggest you start now <laughs> as we prepare uh, uh, for our September meetings, if you will. And uh, I said meetings, uh, we are anticipating bringing the, the housing element to the planning commission essentially in two pieces, if you will, before the planning commission, once on September 2nd, and then again on the September 16th, just to make it as digestible as possible. The first meeting that we're gonna have on September 2nd, the focus of that is gonna be on the policy side of, of the housing element. The planning commission has previously seen the housing element. So the general approach is for the benefit of the public uh, to talk about you know, what is a housing element and kind of give the, the grand overview, if you will. And then staff will be diving into what's changed since the last time you saw it. So it's, it's not necessarily gonna be a comprehensive line by line sort of approach, but focusing on uh, the reviews that have already publicly happened previously. So I wanted to sh share all that with you. That's gonna be on September 2nd. On September 16th, um, we'll be back with it and focusing on the environmental review sort part of it. And on September 16th is really where we're gonna be looking for the formal motion for both pieces as we then uh, try to move forward to the city council in October. Um, one of the uh, items that I just wanna be forthright with as well is the state of California. Um, has given uh, jurisdictions up and down the state until October of 2021, which is practically here, as our adoption time for the housing element itself. Uh, so that's just a, a heads up of something big that's coming to all of you. Um, and as we uh, move forward, staff again will be available for questions to each of you individually. If, if you're just trying to wrap your head around, well, what is this thing that I'm really looking at? Um, but it's a, a, a document that'll be available fully for the public as well. Um, in addition to the housing element in September, um, we are gonna be seeing other projects that are gonna be coming forward at the same time. So this is also just a general heads up that our next couple of meetings we're anticipating to be um, more robust in terms of the pure number of, of projects before you. So um, just be aware. Uh, we're going to try to get our, our information out to you as in a timely manner as possible. Um, so just be aware. Um, so, like some of the waves that you're going to be experiencing, <coughs> excuse me, um, a number of our cannabis permits are actually going to be ready um, and coming before you. So what you experienced tonight um, uh, should uh, uh, set maybe a tone or an expectation for what you're gonna see uh, on a number of different applications. But each of those applications are their own individual um, request with their own individual unique circumstances. So with that, um, I actually don't have any other um, uh, comments to provide other than thank you. We very much appreciate your hard volunteer work as well. And staff remains uh, to support each of you in your volunteer uh, uh, positions. So thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. Kovitz. Is there any questions for Mr. Kovitz? And Vice Chair Reichel. Yeah, thank you, Chair Chavez. Um, to Mr. Kovitz, since you did suggest in or say that um, that our next meetings in September are going to be particularly robust or numerous, I was wondering, is it likely um, or possible that the planning commission would need to add another meeting um, given that there might be some items with a more restricted timeline just to make sure if it had to go to council it would um, i just wanted to know 
I'm sure it's happened in the past. I wanted to know if we need to prepare for that eventuality. I'm thinking of my schedule in September. So thank you very much. Vice Chair Wayo, that's a great question. Um, as of this point in time, we're not trying to schedule any additional special meetings. That is something that we do have the ability to do um, if, if it comes to that. If it appears that we need to go down the special meeting route, we'll be in contact. Uh, we'll, we'll make the announcement at a meeting like this, so it's on the public radar, and we'll seek to have dates that are available um, so we can make sure that any sort of special meeting, if needed, would be a very public thing, a very public declaration and decision. But as of this point in time, we're not anticipating a special meeting. Thank you for your comments, Vice Chair. Uh, Commissioner Meyer. Thank you, Chair Travis. Um, in regard, uh, Mr. Kowitz, to the housing element and the uh, updated uh, MND, so will you be able to provide us with a, um, a readily accessible link to those documents? Um, and if so, when? The short answer is yes. Uh, and for the housing element, um, the, the link should be, <laughs> excuse me, um, the link should be available. Uh, Kathleen Mallory is taking the lead on that. Um, if it's not available yet, as soon as it is available, we'll be providing it to you, but I believe it is available now. Um, in addition, for our planning commission, uh, we were going to send hard copy to you as well, uh, just because of what these documents actually are. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Commissioner Meyer. And so, Commissioner Nash, be sure to check your mailbox. <laughs> Is there any further questions to Mr. Kowitz? Seeing and hearing none, since there's no further business before the Planning Commission and it, without any objection to adjournment, we will be adjourning to our August 19, 2021 meeting. Um, and this concludes our regular agenda and we will recess for five minutes as we transition to our rules and subcommittee. Thank you, everyone, and have a great night. Thank you. Take Thank care. You <laughs> Thank you, subcommittee members.
everyone, and welcome to the City of Oxnard Planning Commission Rules and Procedures Bylaw Subcommittee for Thursday, April, oh, sorry, August 5, 2021. This meeting will come to order at 8.12 p.m. Per the Governor's Executive Order N-29-20, some members of the Planning Commission Bylaw Subcommittee and staff will be participating via teleconference the public may provide comments to the Planning Commission Bylaw Subcommittee via email at planning at oxnard.org no later than 3 p.m. on the day of the meeting or through the city's website at or call the Planning Division office at 805-385-7878. In regard to the meetings of the Bylaw Subcommittee, I believe that we can continue the custom of calling on me if you wish to speak. And if there's no objection, we'll carry on our titles from the full planning commission meeting. Because the meeting is electronic, all votes, if any, will be recorded by roll call. Madam Secretary, can we please have the roll call? Commissioner Connolly? Here. Chair Chavez? Here. Vice Chair Rojo? Here. We have quorum. Thank you, Madam Secretary. We will now move on to agenda item C1, approval of the subcommittee minutes of July 15, 2021. Are there any correction to the minutes? Chavez moves for approval. Second. Chair Chavez moves and Commissioner Connolly uh, seconds the motion to approve the minutes as distributed. Can we please have the roll call, Madam Secretary? Chair Chavez? Aye. Commissioner Connolly? Yes. Vice Chair Rojo? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Madam Secretary. And Chair, Chair Chavez, this is Scott Colitz. I wanted to pop in here for just a quick second as a housekeeping item. Um, I think we skipped over the public comments, uh, not on the agenda. We don't have any public speakers, so that's that's okay. I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, and then another quick housekeeping item. Uh, if we um, go as we're uh, as where I think we're going, where we're not going to have another subcommittee meeting after today. Um, the minutes from this subcommittee, we're going to put those on the regular planning commission's uh, agenda, but only the subcommittee members will be able to vote for those on that particular agenda. So just as a quick housekeeping thing, so no one is taken off guard. Thank you, Mr. Kowitz, in regards to the minutes and for section B public comments, um, just for formality's sake, um, Madam Secretary, do we have any public comments? We do not. You, Madam Secretary, um, and I apologize for that skip. Uh, going back now to Section D, Rules and Procedures Bylaws Discussion. This Planning Commission Rules and Procedures Bylaws Subcommittee will review and suggest revisions to the Rules and Procedures of the Planning Commission in preparation of reporting its findings and recommendations to the Planning Commission by August 19, 2021. Are there any comments from city staff in regards to this agenda item before the subcommittee goes into discussion? And the only city comment is well done. Uh, okay. That was a lot of work that you collectively went through. Uh, it was uh, a very good dialogue back and forth. So we're collectively impressed with uh, what you did, um, how you all approached it from your own unique angle. And it was great to see that the uh, full commission really didn't have, uh, well, that they only had positive comments about the amount of work that you went through. Um, so just well done through and through. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Collins, for those comments. Um, we, uh, if I can speak briefly on behalf of the subcommittee, we really appreciate it. And um, obviously I'll have my own to say at the end of this uh, potentially last subcommittee meeting and at the full planning commission, but we greatly appreciate your comments. Um, uh, sorry. As I um, get myself a little bit more, uh, sorry. Um, distributed to everyone were three memos. Um, we will skip um, the sectioning memo because that has been dispensed with at our most recent planning commission meeting. And so we will be 
looking at corrections and the presentation of the revised bylaws is drafted by the subcommittee memos and related attachments. If there is no objection, we will informally consider the corrections memo and I will save my comments if and when we get to the presentation of the revised bylaws. So if there's no objection, I'd like us to refer to the corrections memo and ask if there are any comments from my fellow subcommittee members um, or any questions. Vice Chair, I, I only just comments that um, after reviewing the correction one, I think it's reasonable and I don't see any um, you know, issues with it. Uh, the only thing that I was saying, I don't believe it was something that we discussed with the full commission was the numbering of each section um, and the presented draft. Um, it has what would be considered rule number three, um, still titled as number one. Um, whereas we have two other, the title and the preference. I don't know if those would warrant a, a rule number, but those are just my comments on it that um, for this particular item. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair Chavez. Uh, I might ask you to clarify the intention of the sectioning memo was, although we could probably just, we could say rule one, section A, um, when we would cite, I assume that we can just say 1A instead of saying rule 1A. Um, okay, That's, I, thank you for that. What, what I heard you say, uh, Commissioner Chavez, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that the title and the preface, preface title when it start as uh, section one, it would be the title and then the preface and then section one would be what we have labeled as section three general provisions is that what i heard correct well just based off of what i'm seeing i'm seeing that okay we have currently right now rule number one is general provisions um and the preference and the title doesn't have um a rule but yet right above it it has a rule number so i don't know if we're attaching the rule number to that or we're just saying the title and just leave it as such and the preference leave it as such and then general provisions is actually rule number one um i i see your co um your comment slash criticism chair chavez um so constructive criticism yeah um <laughs> no i sorry commissioner Conley. I, i'll comment and then you can um so what you're saying yeah if we have rule one title rule two preface um we don't have to we don't need something separate for those bolded capitalized items because that's the rule um so that would call everything the section when i say if it be we would go to rule 4a that would relate to calling of meetings and then any of the sub parts or sections below that so rule four would be meetings, and then four uh, A would be the calling of meetings. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Yeah, Commissioner Connolly, I'm sorry I um barged in. Um, I, I was the barged. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Um, let's see. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Is there any further comments um, from this uh, committee? Um, I, I had two comments. Yes. One, um, what Commissioner um, Nash was talking about in regards to threats of violence, that would be under uh, Rule 6, Section 8, well, A2, essentially disruptive public speakers, correct? Um, I, Commissioner Pauly, I'm going to have staff correct me because I had in my notes that it was to rule a Oh, rule not 
six, like you stated, um, it was to roll. Our, our notes have it for rule six. It's part of the conduct oh. of public hearing. And under the disruptive public speakers portion is where we saw that being added. Oh, okay. uh, and whether or not. Uh, go on, Mr. Boyce. And oh. have it as a long paragraph, or if you want to have a subpart B, um, the formatting of, of how you want to do it is, is completely up to the subcommittee. Mr. Mowitz, I'm going to have you repeat the last 20 seconds of what you said. Sorry, sorry about that. I, not knowing exactly where 20 seconds was, I'll just repeat all of that. <laughs> just... So, so um, staff heard that uh, Commissioner Nash's uh, language would go as part of Rule 6, the conduct of public hearing section. Um, and uh, within that, it would be part of the disruptive public speakers section. That section currently has a, uh, a, a section A associated with it. The subcommittee can determine if they want to include those words that were shared with us as part of, of A, or if they want to include another uh, section, a section B, um, and uh, to be modified with uh, both the, the, the sequencing from how the planning commission voted for things as well as uh, perhaps the, uh, the change to how we're calling things rules or where the rules begin and the, the renumbering associated with it for the conversation we just had. So all of these type of comments I think are relatively small and minor and none of these are going to uh, prohibit us from going back to the full commission on the 19th. Thank you, Mr. Colwitz. I will do a quick informal poll of my fellow subcommittee members. Um, with, assuming that we would like to keep it in rule six section of disruptive public speakers, would we like to add a new section um, so that there would be whatever the numbering system would be a part B, or would we like to make it a sub of part A as it currently stands? I feel like it would be a separate topic in section, B, so it would be its own section B. Thank you, Commissioner Pauly. Uh, Chair Chavez. I agree, section B. Okay, thank you. I was gonna argue subpart, but we'll go with the majority and we'll make it a new section in whatever we present to the full planning commission meeting. Thank you very much. And so did we come to an agreement that we were going to use Commissioner Nash's exact uh, wording or were we going to tighten that up or? Yes, I, I believe we will. Um, I, I believe that's what the motion was. Um, I, I can't speak for the Planning Commission if they would amend it further at the next Planning Commission meeting, but that was my um, recollection and assumption of the meaning of the motion. And if staff could jump in here, I would say that we would move forward with the exact language that uh, Chair, uh, Commissioner Nash has provided uh, that would be included in the bylaws uh, presented fully to the PC on, on the 19th. And if the Planning Commission wanted to further modify that, they could do so at the next meeting. Um, and still adopt the, uh, the, the whole of the bylaws at our next meeting. If it's of interest to the subcommittee committee members, I could reread the words that had been shared. Um, if, if you'd like me to do that now, that's not a problem. And as a matter of record, I'm happy to also um, share it by email as well, just so as we're working on the final edits, you have that too. Thank you, Mr. Colbert. If you could please do both, um, we would greatly appreciate that. So uh, for everyone's convenience here, um, a reading of the motion uh, or the words, any person making a verbal or written threat of violence against any commissioner, staff, or audience member shall be referred to the Oxnard Police Department for investigation of making terrorist threats and possible enforcements of a gun violence restraining order. Thank you, Mr. Poets. Yeah when 
whoever is going to be drafting these bylaws. Um, I will offer myself for that. Um, I'll be speaking with or emailing you um, in regards to incorporating that into the section as informally voted upon by the subcommittee. Thank you very much. Is there any other comments from the subcommittee regarding this corrections memo? The only recommendation I have is would be um, to add page numbers and it's, it's a general formatting note. So that was my, I mean, after the reviewing it, that was really my only recommendation. If there is no objection, we will incorporate page numbers in the draft to present to the planning commission. Vice Chair, I will also just um, reiterate my previous comment um, that I made at the full commission that we strike through um, offer by right underneath the resolution. Uh, again, that was placed there when I originally submitted my um, ideas for the bylaws. Thank you. Acknowledge uh, Chair Chavez, uh, we will do that if there's no objection. And um, additionally, if there's no objection, I will work with staff to um, get the formatting of this resolution into one that we usually see um, at, that's presented to the planning commission. Um, I think that would be appropriate. Okay. Um, if there is no objection, again, um, I will incorporate or all the corrections, suggestions, that were voted on or presented in the corrections memo will be incorporated into the final draft presented to the planning commission on August 19. And um, now at this time, um, I'm, it would be appropriate to have a motion on the floor um, or any further discussion on any other matters also. I'll move the approval of the uh, rules and procedures as presented and as um, taken under consideration from the full commission to be moved to our August 19th, 2021 meeting um, for approval by the full commission. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the resolution in regards to adopting these revised rules and procedures as amended during this meeting and report to the Planning Commission that the subcommittee recommends to approve this resolution. Is there any further discussion at this time? Vice Chair, I'll just make a quick comment that uh, I appreciate both yours and Commissioner Economy's work um, in addressing these um, rules and bylaws. I appreciate also staff for sticking with us and providing their feedback and um, expertise as well so that we have a very strong and um, standard uh, rules and procedures that leaves little room for any confusion. Um, I think we broke it down as best as we can so that everyone understands it and that there was no confusion. So thank you. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Commissioner Connolly? Same. I mean, I couldn't have said it better. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Connolly. And just for a little of formality's sake, unless there's objection from my fellow subcommittee members, I am going to read through just the rules and the title. And if there is any last minute comments, edits, suggestions, that should be made now before we go into the vote. And we are no longer in informal consideration. This is a, from whatever you can say, a formal motion. So if you would like to change something, please um, have it in the form of an amendment. Um, I'll pause a few seconds between each rule and reading of the title. Uh, rule one, title. Rule two, preface. Rule three, general provisions. Rule four, meetings. 
Rule 5, Meeting and Hearing Procedures. Rule 6, Conduct of Public Hearing. Rule 7, Communications and Reports of the Commission. Rule 8, Election and Duties of Officers. Rule 9, Seating Arrangement. Rule 10, Restriction on Representation. Rule 11, Conduct of Commission Members. Rule 12, Record of Meetings. May I make one comment really quickly? Uh, yes, I, Mr. Conley. I did just see a typo under Rule 11, um, Section C. Oh, never mind. That was. That was, <laughs> I didn't find it here. No problem, Commissioner Thank you. Thank you. Rule 12, record of meetings. Rule 13, subcommittees. Rule 14, parliamentary procedure. Rule 15, resignation. Rule 16, adoption and amendment of rules and procedures. Thank you very much. And if there are no amendments on the bylaws as a whole, we will now go into the vote on the motion to approve the resolution as distributed and amended by this subcommittee and report to the Planning Commission on August 19 that the Rosen Procedure Subcommittee recommends to approve this resolution. Madam Secretary, can we please have the roll call? Chair Chavez? Aye. Commissioner Connolly? Aye. Vice Chair Rojo? Motion passes. Thank you, Madam Secretary. So um, I am going to, I'm going to ask for last comments again from city staff, from my fellow subcommittee members, and then I'll make final comments before the dissolution or disbandment of this subcommittee. Staff, any last, last comments? <laughs> Uh, thank you uh, for, uh, for for my last last words. Uh, I actually have uh, two quick things. One is is a, a slight me mea culpa myself, and then kind of a procedural thing of what happens once the planning commission takes action on the full bylaws. Uh, at our last subcommittee subcommittee mem meeting, um, there was a question asked essentially of if there is a member of the planning commission um, who was unable to attend a meeting. Um, are they still able to uh, to participate or uh, make a motion or, or vote, if you will, in absentia? Um, it was an off night. I said yes, and I'm not certain why I said that. I think I might have heard the, the question incorrectly, so I wanted to correct the record on that. Um, a member of the Planning Commission cannot vote in absentia is, is, is the bottom line. Um, if a member of the planning commission knows that they will not be able to attend a meeting, uh, they can provide comments, if you will, like in a written form that can be shared with other commissioners, usually distributed by staff or read by staff, uh, for other planning commissioners to consider. Uh, but because a planning commissioner would not have an opportunity um, in abstentia to hear all the other dialogue that would happen at a meeting, they would not be able to vote. So I wanted to, to clarify that for members of this subcommittee in particular. Um, the, the, the comments though, um, if, if might have been in the context that they were being discussed, um, I think where my brain was, was if a member of the planning commission had missed a prior meeting, 
and an item had been continued from one meeting to the next. So they didn't attend the, the first meeting, but they attended the second meeting. Could they participate in the second meeting? And to that, my answer certainly would be yes, if they went ahead and watched uh, the prior video and read the staff report and basically got caught up to speed with what the prior public conversation had been. So that doesn't change at, at all anything that has been adopted or presented in the bylaws, but I just wanted to come clean with that to make sure that we're, um, <coughs> excuse me, to make sure that procedure is, is known to all of us. So I, that, that's my quick make up. Uh, it was a, a flub at the last meeting, uh, an accidental one at that. Um, but I just wanted to, to make sure that we're all on the, the same page. In terms of next steps, so we're back to the Planning Commission to present the full of the bylaws. Uh, assuming that the Planning Commission would uh, adopt the bylaws at the next meeting, the final step after that is uh, staff actually presents them to the full City Council. Um, so the Council is aware of what these are in particular. Um, so we'll arrange uh, that with the City Clerk. And it would be appropriate um, uh, at the uh, decision of the Planning Commission themselves, if you also want to send a member of the commission uh, to uh, council in case the, the council has any questions for either staff or for a member of the commission. That doesn't have to be decided upon at this moment, but I at least wanted to put that seed in the back of everyone's head as we're moving forward uh, towards ultimately uh, uh, that meeting with the city council. Thank you, Mr. Kowitz. Um, I don't believe I remember that mistake, but I trust that um, I, the record is set straight uh, nonetheless. And in regards to um, a possible representative from the Planning Commission, I believe those comments can be filtered to the chair of the Planning Commission who happens to be with us. And so um, I believe as our subcommittee members will discuss and work that out with the chair and the planning commission. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Povitz. Uh, uh, fellow subcommittee members. Vice Chair, I'll just say, um, again, thank you for everyone's hard work. And um, thank you to Mr. Colwitz uh, for his um, integrity. Um, although it is something that we all might have overlooked, but um, his integrity to be able to provide accurate information to the public is um, admirable. And we appreciate him and we appreciate him being part of our city. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Conley. No comment. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to state, as I have said numerous times in this subcommittee that I um, truly appreciate the time that we have uh, spent together and all the work, all the preparation that has gone before all of these subcommittee mem uh, meetings, um, in addition to a couple of them that lasted, I wanna say two of them lasted past 10 p.m. Um, I, um, I can't um, understate or I can't, I, I can't, um, I can't believe that we were able to do a full revision of the bylaws in such an efficient way um, in consideration of all the experiences, the background that we all come from. We have someone experienced in Chair Chavez. We have some new um, ideas from Commissioner Conley and myself um, from inside and outside the city. Um, and I read recently that one of the ways um, one of the new, um, new members to any organization have the easiest time to see any possible flaws or corrections that have been made. And um, I believe that we'll, we had that on this subcommittee and we'll have that at the Planning Commission. We have a great mix so that it's not a drastic or revolutionary change, but change that is um, with a foundation um, from staff with their great experience with us being on the planning commission for however long that has been. And I plan to make my comments uh, a little bit even more effusive um, at the full planning commission because, um, you know, only a few of us really have seen these subcommittee meetings. Um, 
I would like to say that a lot of the public will also have seen this, but um, I, I doubt that they have the, um, the zeal that we also have for these planning commission bylaws. And so I just want to say I greatly appreciate the time um, that we have spent together. We've been able to discuss in so many ways um, all facets of planning commission and most of these bylaws are going to come into um, are going to probably be acted upon very soon. Um, so uh, I feel that it was needed and I'm glad that Chair Chavez brought it up at one of our first few meetings. And um, I greatly appreciate that staff. Um, I'm so sorry that um, our meetings lasted so long, but um, I'm glad um, for your sake in regards to the time that it has ended, um, fortunately and unfortunately. And so with that, our subcommittee is disbanded and I look forward to us reporting this out to the full planning commission. Good night, everyone. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Good night. Thank everyone. you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.